welcome back to the studio. Sometimes I plan out videos so that we have kind of a theme going on certain days of the month or different topics that we're doing and sometimes it's just a matter of happenstance or uh, synchronicity with different items or uh, occurrences. The Over the weekend I was at Joanne Fabrics. I just needed to run in to get a, a cheap piece of backing fabric and um, they were having a sale, of course, they're always having some kind of a sale. And in their Halloween department, they had these big plaques. Originally, they were like $19, but they were 50% off. And they had them in their Halloween decor, and I suppose it's supposed to look like a tombstone. But to me, it doesn't look like a tombstone at all. It looks like a really beautiful, ornate plaque. And... Um, I was just going to get one and I thought, no, I kind of like the idea of symmetry and so I got two. So what I'm going to do today is um, I don't necessarily like them, uh, their natural color. They're fine, perfectly fine. They're sanded smooth and everything. But I think I'm going to whitewash these as I have done before with uh, little boxes or something. I think I've got a little box here. So um, what I'm going to do, I came home and I looked through some of the samples that I had from Applique Elements to see what I could get that would fit inside of these panels. And I was lucky because I had two of these uh, Season Greetings Garland in the dots and I have two of the Season Greeting Garland in Batik. So I'm going to do one of each, one all Batik, one all dots. But I kind of like the idea of it because when I'm finished, I can hang one on each side of the wall and create a little bit of symmetry. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some white regular household paint and I'm going to dilute that with water, probably about 50-50. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint these and let those dry so there's going to be a little bit of an intermission in which time I'll probably do a little bit of sewing. Imagine that. So I'm going to go ahead and get the paint out and I'll show you what it looks like with the paint going on. And then after these panels are dry, we'll move right into the laser cut applique. This part really isn't uh, rocket science. It's just a little bit of uh, fun, fun creativity playing around. I have in my little Tupperware container just some household paint. This is left over from the color of my studio upstairs and this is just pure paint in here. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, dilute this a little bit with some water because I want this to be more of a whitewash than just pure paint. It's just going to uh, make it a little bit more opaque instead of no, it's going to make it more transparent instead of opaque. I'll get there. And <clears throat> you can see already the pure color on the backing. It's very light. And so I think it's just going to pick up the color of all the greens in the garland. But when we actually get to the uh, whitewashing, which I'm going to start doing now, I think it's just going to make the uh, wood come through just a little bit more. And I've got on my ironing board cover some old um, quilt samples, some test pieces that I've done at some point that have been lying around. I just had them cut up using them for little uh, pet beds outside if I needed one during the winter months for any kitten. So the wood's going to soak this up pretty quickly but I don't want to get too heavy in any one area. Like I said I really just want the wood to still shine through a little bit so if it's lighter in some areas and darker in others that's fine with me. This will probably dry pretty quickly which is also going to be a good thing so I can get carried on with the rest of the project. And with all of the lights on, it makes it a little bit hard for me to see what I'm doing exactly with the light right in my eye. So after I cut away, I will go ahead and examine these to make sure that I'm getting the full coverage that I want. But you can see just how quickly 
this goes and I am using a full-size brush probably a little bit much for um, this little panel but it is it was readily available at the top of the pile in the garage so for my purposes today I'm just going to go ahead and wing it grab the tool I could find rather than the perfect tool at the rate I'm slapping this paint on I may have to take another shower today so as you can see this is almost finished I'll go ahead and get the other panel attended to they'll both be the same color and I'll make sure that I've got all of the nooks and crannies covered on this and then we'll go ahead and let these dry and then I'll bring you back in when we get to uh, the placement of our garland and we will have a fairly quick project here and I know a lot of us are at home a lot uh, during these last few months but still nobody wants to spend forever on a single project if your kids are crafty I think you could certainly get their help in this project something like this and if you couldn't find these exact panels with all of the resources that are available to us nowadays I would think you could find something very similar so I'm going to go ahead and finish up and we'll get back just as soon as we can welcome back to day two I went ahead and painted both of my plaque boards but I just went ahead and set them outside and let them dry they were dry probably in an hour or so but I never got back to uh, to the video I started quilting on something and as many of you know once you start quilting can't stop it's like a potato chip so we have two of our plaques I painted these a light green and um, two reasons one is I love green I have this paint left over from my studio upstairs but I did these in the whitewash which was fine and you can see I even watered that one down a little bit more but I thought these might show up a little bit more on the white walls without uh, being too obtrusive in color too overpowering so I have uh, two different colorways two different fabric choices there's a batik and a dots and this is the pattern that I'm going to be using it won't exactly all fit in there as it is but I'm going to twist it a little bit and then reuse some of the leaves and on each one of these I think I'm going to do a double stack so that basically this whole plaque is coated with the applique um, I'm only going to do one at a time on the video so I'm going to go ahead and pull you in a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing and I'm going to remove one of the plaques and the uh, component pieces for the applique and then we'll go ahead and see how this pans out I have pulled the camera in I have my plaque sideways so I can get it all on the table and for the first part I pulled out my pattern paper for the applique the uh, name of this is seasons greeting garland and the first one I'm going to be using is batik so I'm going to use two batik packages uh, to fill up the entire board I could just use one and I think I'm just going to open up the first one just to see how that looks on the board if I want to have both so I'm playing it by ear I pulled my pattern out and one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off some of the excess paper which might just help me visualize how I want this to fit on the board I can see exactly where the pieces are going to fit exactly as designed and where it won't and that's where I'll have to make some artistic choices 
So you can see that I have almost everything here is going to fit in. There's a little fudge work here and here. I think if I shifted the angle of this, I could get it in. But also I could use some of these components to lengthen the design and maybe only use one package. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my pieces out. I like to get the pieces pulled out of the package, get them laid out more or less where they would go on the design. And then before I start peeling the backing off, I can go ahead and see how I like it on the board. With the paper on there, it will look exactly as it would once the paper backing is removed. So I'll carefully pull out all of my pieces. The pattern always comes with a color cover sheet, which you could use to help uh, put specific pieces in place. What you get is what's on inside the white box here. So all of that is uh, pre-cut here in the packaging. All of the pieces have the fabric, the fusible interfacing on the back, and the paper backing. So it's basically just peel, place, and press. If I go ahead and separate all of my dots, I can separate them by uh, shape and then by color. So you can see I have uh, pinker dots. These would be the berries on the holly. And then I have all of the leaves, all of my little curves. And I'm seeing here that we have what looks like three different fabrics used for the leaves. And this was packed by Vicky. Thank you, Vicky. And then we have some of our little squiggles. These would be the vine or the stems inside of the uh, design. So now that I have these components done, I can pull out my color cover because that's always helpful to place the pieces exactly as they were. And there's also a full set of instructions in each package also, so it makes it really easy. Um, I won't need the scissors or these packaging, so I'm going to set all of these things I don't need aside. And then I can go about putting my pieces uh, approximately where they go and I can just start again these still have the paper backing on it so I don't have to mess with that yet I hope you can also see a lot of these pieces are mirror imaged so we want to pay attention to that. There's different sizes, there's different fabrics, and um, these are just uh, all the different things that you can look at. It's kind of like a little visual puzzle. And I'm gonna go ahead and continue laying this out. I'm gonna to have to get my glasses on because I don't think I look any good with glasses on, but I can't see a thing what I'm doing if I don't have them on. So it always takes me a minute to get the leave orientation the right way. And we'll just continue placing some of these items as they go. I do like the way the fabric component is showing up on the board. I'm happy with that. We have a lot of berries to use. I 
I always like to use, uh, just like the pattern shows, the darker and lighter berries um, on the board together. The darker should always be the underneath and the lighter on top. That gives you uh, the idea of dimensionality since darker colors recede and brighter colors come forward. So that is the bottom, the top half. And then we'll be going down the side. Here, here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, we're missing one. This goes here. I'm just going to put them as they show on here, and then <clears throat> as I need to. I can stretch the design out a little bit and see if I like one or two. And before I even glue these, I think I might set one aside as a single and then I'll pull the other uh, kit out and do the double and see which one we like the best. Although I probably won't be able to hear what you say. I'm just going to set these aside for now. That gives me a little bit of a representation, so I'm going to go ahead and set this one aside. And I'm going to pull out the second one. Now this time, we're going to be using the dots fabric. So we'll see how those do on here. I'm not going to cut up my pattern because I already have the other one cut up, but I can go ahead and pour all these pieces out and we're going to see what two whole packets look like on the board. That's the fun thing with these to begin with. You get a packet, a selection, and you get a base design, but uh, these are not intended for any specific exact project. It's uh, not like a block of the month can only be used one way. These can be used on a variety of projects and we're using it today on wood, but this material would also fuse to glass, to metal, to canvas, burlap, can be put on a jacket, a t-shirt, down the front of your jeans, a leg of the jeans. Uh, so there's a lot of ways that this could be used. And that was my timer. I have a cake in the oven. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, separate these out as soon as I pull my cake out. And we'll bring you back in and show you what this looks like with two design packets on it instead of one. Well, there are two different things happening simultaneously. One is... Um, I laid out all of the components for the batik and I have to adjust the spacing a little bit 
I don't have those berries in place. But I like the amount of negative space with the design um, as far as the board is concerned. There technically is room for two of these on here, but I think once I get these pieces in place and uh, spread them out just a little bit, I'll be happier with this placement, this intensity of design. This bottom one, this is how tight it would look if I used two full packets. One is I'm losing the, the garland shape of this because everything is so compacted with the double and no free space around it. So I'm losing the design. But also, I think what I ended up with on my second packet was a mix match of designs because some of the leaves are curved and some of them are the holly leaves. So I think when we were at the show one time, we had a packet that we had to get into and mix the pieces up. And what I've ended up with, this is the second one of that. And so the leaves would not match. I don't have enough berries for the top. So that's secondary. And actually it's my least worrisome component because I actually wouldn't mind mixing the leaves top and bottom. But I just think it's so compacted in this format that we're losing the illusion of the garland, the vine. So I'm only going to use one package per board and I'm going to go ahead and lay this out a little bit more. We'll get this one out of the way for the moment. I'll continue uh, spreading this out, making sure I have all of the pieces in the right order, more or less. And I probably will have a couple little pieces that I might use at the top or bottom if they're too full on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and put those the way I want them and then I'll start the video again and we'll get to the part where we're actually going to fuse these to the board. I have been fidgeting with the pattern uh, for about 10 minutes. Uh, once I decided that I was just going to use one sheet, I folded the pattern over. It was already creased in my case on that line. So I just made some ink marks on there so I could get a representation of what the visual center, what the actual center was of this design. And then I put my little post-it note on the board. <clears throat> my board was 44 and a half inches from top to bottom, eliminating that little half circle. So at 22 and a quarter, I put my post-it note here so I knew that this was approximately the center of my design. I did that just to give me a little bit of a reference point for when I started laying the component pieces in. And then basically I worked from the center out. Now I have eliminated these pieces that stick out a little bit too far or I've scrunched them in. And then I went ahead and used those extra pieces to fill in a little bit at the top of the bottom. As I said earlier, this little packet was not designed specifically for this board, but I can still absolutely use it. Uh, right now, all of the component pieces are laid out just about where I want them. Um, I'll make sure that they're really where I want them when I peel the paper off the back. When I peel the paper, it's uh, peel, place, and press. So I'll peel the paper first, piece by piece, and lay it back down. The Steam and Seam 2 has a tackiness to it that will allow this to adhere to the board, but it will not be fused yet. So I can get all of the pieces in place, take a good look at it, and make sure it's uh, what I like. And then when I'm ready, I can go ahead and fuse these to the board utilizing the hot iron. I'll probably give it a little mist of uh, moisture also because steam -a seam requires moisture just as the name indicates in the uh, steam -a seam. Um, I don't keep water in my iron so that way it never leaks. So I'll just use a little spray bottle and mist it and then I'll use a Teflon pressing sheet over top of it to uh, press just to protect the iron from the paint. Uh, any fusible that might seep out from the edges of the applique. So at this point I'm ready to start peeling the paper off and as I said it's just peel, place, and press. So sometimes I will have a little flower head pen in case I need it. I don't always need it. 
but you just turn the appliques over and peel the paper off and I'm going to do this piece by piece so that all of the other pieces in the applique can help keep me in line to where I was to begin with and I'm going to put my little scraps of paper on top of my paper pattern so I can walk that over to the garbage can without getting those all over my floor and this is a fairly quick process I think if you have uh, kids that have some good manual dexterity or you want to teach them that this would be a, a good thing for them to help out with a lot of times I find with these little curlies if I stick the um, beginning point where I need it generally it curves out the way I want it to but this one's going to be contradictory since I said that the nice thing about the steam seam 2 is that it allows you to place something and then uh, pick it up and move it if you need to it is repositionable So I'm slowly getting that where I want it. I'll have to go back and see where my berries were because I've gotten those mixed up now. Where this one is slid open, I like to peel it from the opposite direction so that I'm not getting that slit caught in the middle of the direction I'm peeling the paper off. These little berries, I always like to put their little round shape right into the curve of the holly leaf. So it echoes that pattern out. And I'm getting, getting up here towards the top half. Now I realize that depending on what climate you're in, some people may have a different experience with peeling the paper off of this uh, fabric. For me, I'm having absolutely no problem peeling it off at all. If you are having a problem, you can always take a flower head pen or a seam ripper or an awl and score the back of a piece of the paper, the paper backing, and then you can bend the paper and it gives you some place to tear from to peel that backing. Sometimes it's also a good idea to do that if you're working with a circle so that you don't fray the edge of the little circle. But again, these are peeling off so beautifully that I really don't have to worry about that as a concern. As I was laying these pieces out, because I knew I had a larger space to fill than what the uh, garland was originally designed for, I went ahead and spread these out just a little bit more so that it would fill up the board. And since I only used one packet of the uh, applique and I have two of the batik, I think probably I'm going to go ahead and uh, use both boards with the batik and then um, utilize the other garland for a different project down the line. With the berries, we have the darker and the lighter. And I always like to have the lighter berry towards the front and the darker berry towards the back. That helps to uh, add a little bit of dimensionality to the design. 
Now I can come back real quick and see where some of the berries are that I didn't get put in. I have three here. And I'm going to reposition this piece just so that visually that creates a little circle there with the curve of the two leaves. And this one those berries were supposed to go in there, but the space is too tight now, so I'm going to put them over here. I'm halfway done with the pieces again I'm spreading them out a little bit as I go I could have put that berry out here just to spread out the color but really the berries would be closer to the stem not that that really matters in a project like this but I was a nursery professional at one point so, I kind of like to be botanically correct. You could certainly go out and buy wall art of just about any category these days, but it's kind of nice to create something yourself because then you have uh, the memory of the, of the item. It makes it a little bit more personal And it makes that uh, more fun as you're putting the decorations out to know that it was something that you actually created. If you do this with your kids, it gives them a memory as well. It makes these a lot more meaningful. Now all of these pieces at this point are still repositionable. They're not permanent until I fuse them with the iron. And I don't even have my iron turned on yet, but that's fine because I still have a few minutes. Again, I'm putting the berry right in the curve. Now these are the pieces that I removed from the side so that it fit in the board side to side. So I'm just using them to elongate the pattern a little bit. And this is my last berry. So at this point I can go ahead and put my pattern aside or just walk it right over to the garbage so I can slide off all of these little pieces of paper. I can remove my center marking and at this point all of the pieces are stuck to the board but it's still temporary. Nothing is permanently fused. So I'll go ahead and turn the iron on and then I'll get uh, my pressing sheet and my mister and I'll go ahead and spray this down so that I can go ahead and get this fused all permanently to the board. As you can see I went ahead and swapped my uh, dots kit for the second batik kit that I had 
rather than scrunch them both into one board I put them onto two um, I kept them both the same so you can see they're more or less a mirror image but there are a couple little differences that I made as I was doing the second one all of these are just uh, put in place by removing the paper backing I haven't fused them yet so I'm going to go ahead and fuse these one at a time the uh, repositionable paper makes it or the adhesive makes it nice so I could reposition these if I needed to but also it's not going to fall off as I'm working on it um, I've said before I don't keep water in my iron so I'm just going to give a little bit of moisture to the fabric of the applique so that when I put my Teflon pressing sheet over them, there is some moisture there to connect with the fusible and activate that. And I'm just going to go ahead and place my pressing sheet over top of it. And I'm just going to go slowly down the board. The Teflon pressing sheet keeps the iron clean. It traps the moisture in underneath the Teflon pressing sheet so it has time to activate the fusible adhesive and contact with the surface. In this case it's wood. It also protects the edges of the applique in case, like me, you get a little bit lazy and forget to pick the iron up as you're moving it. The edge of the iron will not catch the edge of the applique and, and crinkle it up and then fuse it crinkled, which is not a look we're going for. So I'm just going to slowly, slowly, slowly move down the course of the board. And as soon as I do this, essentially I'm finished. There would be no need to top coat this with polyurethane or anything. You certainly could if you wanted to. Um, it would protect it from stains, but it's not necessary for the permanence of the applique. These appliques could be attached to glass wood, metal, canvas, burlap, cotton. Uh, there's a wide variety of ways that you could use these. But you can see that this project has gone fairly quickly aside from the drying time on the board. Now I happened to find these boards at a store and they were ten dollars a piece which I think is miraculous. Uh, but they were on sale. But um, this made a really quick holiday project that I'm going to remember for a long time and I'm just going to continue ironing these letting the heat penetrate the fusible penetrate my pressing sheet and attach these permanently to the board after I get these done you'll probably see them hanging in the studio at some point um, I do have an opportunity coming up to redecorate the room a little bit because I have about four or five finished projects that are coming back. I have a friend that does binding for me. I make the binding and machine attach it but she whips the binding down by hand and she also whips my sleeves on for me. So that's a really really great friend if you ask me. I'm just going to go back to the top. Sometimes I get anxious because I'm videotaping or uh, you know I, I need to get something finished so I rush this process. Fusing properly at the beginning is the most important part of this for its longevity. We really want to make sure that we are adhering it, giving that heat time to penetrate the pressing sheet, the fabric, the fusible web and then can uh, make contact with the surface that we're attaching it to. So I really even sometimes like to add some pressure to the iron to make sure that we're getting really good contact with our surface. I'm going to go ahead and complete the pressing part because it's not the most exciting thing to watch and then when I get the two boards finished I'll show you what those look like. Well this pretty much wraps up my little project. These are two decorative plaque boards as we have said. I just gave them a whitewash with some existing paint. Found the boards at a local uh, fabric DIY uh, big shop. Um, they happened to be on sale and that was what motivated the project this week. I had the Seasons Greeting Garland already here so I didn't have to order that. I had them both in the batik and the dots. 
I tried doubling them up uh, and making two packets fit on each panel, but I think it was just a little bit too crowded. And so I opted for just using the batik so that um, I have two that match. These will probably get hung here on the wall when I uh, redecorate some of the uh, room for Christmassy stuff. So you'll see these on the wall behind me at some point. Super easy project. Peel, place, and press on the laser cut applique. The applique kits always come with the fabric that you see on the front of the cover. Um, they're already pre-fused and laser cut, so they have super crisp edges. As you saw today, these were fused onto wood, but they can be fused on a variety of uh, surfaces. Wood, metal, canvas, burlap, backpacks, jackets, jeans. Um, so not just a quilting project, easy for the whole family to get involved and build some holiday memories in this case. Um, but this was super easy to do. They're not exactly identical because the placement, though close, um, was a little different when I did the second one. That's just human nature. But also I love symmetry, so that's why I did two of the same thing. Um, thanks for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please share, like, uh, subscribe if that's uh, something you'd like to do. Uh, we have about 90 or so videos up right now, so enjoy some of the other videos, and thanks for stopping by.